Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, webinar titled Mastering Profiles and Trims with Expert Tips. I'm Jim Olson with the National Tile Contractors Association, and I want to welcome you and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend today's webinar. It's sponsored by Lady Creek. Before I introduce today's speaker, I want to remind you that during the webinar, you will be muted. Please use the questions area on your computer to type in your questions and we'll answer those questions at the end of this presentation. If the audio on your computer is poor, call the number on the invite to this webinar and listen on your phone. All NTCA webinars are available to watch at any time on the NTCA YouTube channel shortly after the webinars are presented. This will give you easy access to watch and or share all current and past programs at your convenience. All right, I'm happy to uh, introduce today's presenter, Ben Lampy. He is uh, the Group Product Manager for Grout Sealants and Profiles and Trims at Lady Creed International. He holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Lehigh University and is a certified project manager professional through the Project Management Institute. With his extensive experience and expertise, Ben plays a key role in driving product innovation and development at Lady Creed. Welcome, Ben. We look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Jim. Um, as Jim said, we're here to go over mastering profiles and trims with expert trips. So welcome, everyone. As Jim said, my name is Ben Lampy, and I'm the Group Product Manager for Profiles and Trims here at LataCrete. Today, we're diving into mastering profiles and trims in tile installations. Um, a little on my background, I have been with LataCrete for a little over six years and managing the profiles and trims line since we introduced it back in 2023. We are gonna be covering a lot of topics today, but by no means are we gonna cover everything. If there's something we don't cover or a question that pops up after the webinar, here's my email. I will also share it again at the end of the presentation in case you need it. There is also a wealth of information on our website for you to review at your own pace. and I do encourage you to go uh, visit it. And lastly, feel free to join us on social. There's a growing community of professionals like yourselves talking all things tiles, not just profiles and trims. I personally learn a ton through all the different discussion. So with that, let's dive right in. Here's what we'll cover today. The basics of profiles, their importance, common shapes and materials, insulation and maintenance. During the insulation portion, we'll spend some extra time going over both how to size and cut profiles, two areas we get a lot of questions about. And to wrap up, we'll touch on two specialty profiles you might encounter, coves and movement joint profiles. Whether you are an experienced installer or just learning the basics, hopefully each of you will take something away from today's webinar. So without further ado, let's get started. So what are profiles and trims? They go by a lot of different names. Whether you call them profiles, trims, metals, strips, or anything else, they're all the same thing. Profiles and trims are both decorative and functional. They add a finished look, protect edges, and help transition between materials. In many cases, they have taken the place of traditional tile edging pieces, such as bull nose or pencil edging. So much so that many tile manufacturers no longer even offer these items. While seemingly simplistic, profiles and trims can add a lot of value to the tile installation. Probably the most apparent use for profiles and trims is their aesthetic quality. Finishing a tile installation with profiles creates a professional and polished look, elevating the overall presentation. This is a great way for tile installers to show their expertise and by extension, earn more money. By selecting different finishes, you can make the profile do a variety of different things. You could select the profile that coordinates with the tile or the grout, creating a sense of continuity flowing from one element to another. This can make a space seem more open or spacious. Conversely, as shown in this picture, you can choose a contrasting profile that matches your fixture or your hardware and create a focal point or an area of emphasis drawing the eye towards it. And the great part is there's an almost endless variety of finishes and colors to choose from. So any design you want, you can go for. 
The second reason most people choose to use profiles and trims is to protect the edges of tiles. This could be from chipping or cracking, and this helps to extend the overall life of the installation. The edges of the tile are the most prone to breaking. Using a trim piece to protect ensures these delicate areas can't be hit. And it's for this reason that choosing the correct size profile is so important and why we're gonna spend extra time on that particular topic. And lastly, an often overlooked aspect of profiles and trims is what they can do to create a safe environment. Once a tile is chipped or cracked, there's now the potential for a sharp edge, which could be a safety concern. None of us wanna get out of the shower, reach for a towel, and scrape ourselves on a chipped tile. Once installed, a profile will stop this from occurring for the complete life of the installation. So now that we know why you might want to use a profile and trim, you might be asking yourself, where can I use a profile? The great part is that profiles can be used all over. Wherever there's tile installed, chances are there's a profile that will fit your need. Profiles and trims are used in all sorts of construction, including single and multifamily homes, hospitals, restaurants, and everything you can imagine in between. Profiles can be used for floors, walls, and countertops, as well in exterior or interior spaces. As you can see, they are very, very versatile and adaptable to your needs. We are gonna review some more specifics on what profiles might be best suited for each area. But if you ever need help selecting a profile, most manufacturers are willing to help. With such a wide range of areas that profiles can be used in, you can imagine how many different profiles are out there. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but here are six of the most common shapes or forms that you're likely to run into. In the top left, you have the L-shaped edging profiles. These are great for edge protection and provide a sleek look. Depending on the finish, they can also be used not only on walls and countertops, but also on floors. Next, you have round edge profiles, a more decorative profile that creates a subtle rounded edge. These are best for walls and countertops. You also have square edge profiles, which create a modern look and can be great for creating decorative elements when spaced correctly. These are also best for walls and countertops as well. You also see a variety of different transition profiles. Some have different forms depending on what you're moving uh, from one material to the next. They offer not only edge protection, but are specifically designed to move from one flooring type to another. They can have a large variety of shapes and sizes. Next, you have cove profiles, and we'll touch on these more at the end. These are mostly used in commercial spaces. These are designed to transition between planes, creating a sanitary, easy to clean corner. And lastly, we have expansion or movement joint profiles. Also most commonly used in commercial settings, these account for expansion and contraction and stop the tile from buckling or cracking. While there are many different shapes and forms of profiles, each shape or form can come in multiple materials. Selecting the right material makes sure the profile fits your needs. We're gonna go over the three most common types of materials that you're gonna encounter. The first is polyvinyl chloride or PVC as it's commonly known. This is a great cost-effective choice. It comes in a variety of colors and styles, but the one drawback is it can only be used in light duty applications and typically only for walls and countertops. Probably the most popular choice of the material is aluminum. They have a great balance of performance and cost, and also being the most popular material, they have the widest range of finishes. Uh, this extends anywhere from a mill finish to an anodized finish, which are your chrome and nickel and other traditional metallic finishes, all the way to the more decorative color and texture coated. This is also where you'll find the most um, ability to match your surrounding uh, grout and fixtures. An additional advantage is that they tend to be easier to cut and work with as well. 
And lastly, you have stainless steel. These profiles offer the pinnacle of performance. They have the highest durability, scratch resistance, and chemical resistance. For these reasons, you often see them in high traffic environments or outdoor applications. Typically, stainless steel profiles are made in uh, 304 grade, but there are additional um, grades available, such as 316, when you need additional chemical resistance. The biggest drawback to stainless steel profiles is that they can be harder to cut and work with, but we'll talk more about how you can go about doing that. Now that we've gone over the different shapes and types of profiles, as well as materials, we're gonna focus on how to install profiles. Once a profile is selected, um, we have broken it down into seven simple steps for installation. And we're gonna walk you through each one of these, taking some extra time to dive into the details about sizing and cutting profiles. No matter what technique you use to install your profiles, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that you always want to install your profiles prior to setting your tile. Step one, this is probably most important. This is the initial selection of the profile. As we have mentioned before, selecting the correct size profile is critica critical to maximizing the performance and the benefits of your profile. When selecting a profile, I always compare it to Goldilocks and three bears. You don't want your profile to be too small. You don't want it to be too big. You want it to be just right. If a profile is too small, it won't adequately cover the tile edge. This will cause lippage and the potential for the tile to still chip or crack. And aesthetically, it really just doesn't look good. If it's too big, it will cover the tile, but once again, you'll have lippage and also an area where dirt and, deb and debris can build up over time, making it both hard to clean and unsanitary. The correct size profile will be flush or slightly above the tile edge. This will ensure the entire edge is protected, giving a cohesive experience or a cohesive appearance. So how do you select the correct size profile? Like most things, the key is in the planning. The first place to start is with the tile thickness, TT in our diagram. This will have the greatest impact on what size profile to use and is a great starting point. Next, you will need to consider the thickness of the adhesive that will be used to set the tile. This we will call AT or adhesive thickness. This is often overlooked and leads to people selecting a profile that is way too small. The amount of adhesive will vary by the adhesive chosen and the tile being installed. So this is an area to pay special attention to. Adding these two values together will determine the thickness of the profile needed, pH or profile height in the diagram. One thing to note is that the height of the profile is actually measured from the distance from the top of the surface of the anchoring leg to the top of the profile. When we're working with larger format tiles, you also need to keep in mind that the likelihood of bowing or an evenness is much greater and needs to be accounted for. They also typically will require a thicker bed of adhesive, and both these will push you to size up to a larger profile to ensure complete coverage of that tile edge. So let's put this into practice with a real world example. Here we have an example you may run into in the field. In our case, we are going to be working with a half inch or 12.7 millimeter thick tile. This is our starting point. Next, to set our tile, we check the data sheet for the adhesive we are going to use and see that we need a quarter inch or 6.4 millimeter bed of adhesive for the tile selected. We then add these two together to get a total thickness of three quarters of an inch or 19.1 millimeter. This, needs, this means we need to use a three quarter or 20 millimeter profile or greater. Now this example happens to work out exactly, but often the calculation will fall between two sizes or the exact size won't be available. In these cases, always select the larger of the two profiles available to you. Now that we have selected the correct size profile, we are ready to move on to step two. 
In our step two, we want to measure and cut all our profiles to the appropriate length. The best way to cut profiles seems to generate a lot of opinions and questions. So we are gonna spend more time on this as well, going through each material and the tools we suggest for cutting each. So our first uh, material again is PVC. PVC is one of the easier materials to work with. For cutting PVC profiles, simple hand tools are normally sufficient. We recommend using either a hacksaw with miter box or miter shears for an accurate cut. Aluminum profiles can also be cut with a hacksaw and miter box, but if you're only doing a couple of profiles, this is a great way to go. But I suggest for a faster, cleaner cut to use a miter or chop saw. Choose a blade with the highest tooth per inch or TPM, which will give you a finer cut with fewer burrs. Either way, you should make sure to follow all the manufacturer's safety precautions and select a blade designed for cutting aluminum or non-ferrous materials. Alternatively, you can also use a variable speed grinder with cutting wheel as well. Whatever tool you select, all cuts should be finished off by filing to remove any burrs or sharp edges. I have often seen people use wet saws to cut profiles since they are already on the job site. While this can be done, I don't recommend this as it dulls your blade and it has the potential to break the saw. You really should use the correct tool. Cutting stainless steel has a reputation for being difficult, but selecting the correct tool makes this task much easier. For stainless steel, regardless of grade, we suggest either a miter, chop saw, or band saw. Since stainless steel will discolor with heat, moving slowly through the cut is key to avoiding overheating. Also, keep in mind that stainless steel was chosen for its corrosion resistant properties, so you want to make sure a dedicated stainless steel blade is used. Make sure the blade hasn't previously been used to cut any non-ferrous materials, or it will deposit small amounts of material as it cuts, cross-contaminating the profile and leading to future issues. A couple of other tips and tricks for cutting to keep in mind. When measuring profiles, the old adage, measure twice, cut once, definitely applies. Once cut, especially if cut too short, there is no way to go back. We also recommend always dry fitting the pieces after cutting to make sure all your measurements are accurate. This is especially important when using corner pieces or accessories, as it's easy to forget to account for them in your calculations. Also, always select a cutting blade with the highest tooth per inch or TPI available. This will lead to a cleaner um, cut with less burrs. And lastly, when two pro profiles intersect in a corner, make sure the anchoring legs don't overlap or intersect. This can be done with a simple pair of metal snips to remove the anchoring leg in this particular section, as shown in the uh, picture in the lower right. Another question we often get asked is how to deal with corners or intersections where two profiles come together. Here are three different ways um, that I often see it, this addressed. The first is a T-intersection, where the two profiles meet perpendicular to each other. This, me this method can be used on L-shaped or square profiles, but doesn't lend itself well to round edge or more complicated shapes. The second method is a miter joint, where the two profiles are cut or mitered, typically at a 45 degree angle, to seamlessly join them. This is especially popular with L-shaped profiles. The third method uses preformed corner pieces. Each corner piece is sized and shaped to perfectly match the profile it's being used with. It's important to note that for square edge profiles, corner pieces can be used both for inside and outside corners interchangeably. But for round edge profiles or more complicated shapes, the inside and outside corners differ. So you'll need to pay special attention um, when selecting the correct corner piece. The way you choose to do corners is up to your personal preference. Now that we have sized and cut our profiles, it's on to step three. In step three, we'll apply the tile adhesive to the area where the profile is being installed. 
This is typically done using either a margin or notch trowel. Either modified or, un or unmodified thin set may be used. For step four, we are placing the profiles into the adhesive and aligning the profile to the correct position so that it's straight and square. Press the profile firmly into the adhesive until the adhesive flows through the punching in the anchoring leg. At this point, small adjustments can be made while the adhesive is still wet. Now that we have positioned and placed our profile, it's on to step five. Add more adhesive over the mounting leg to fully encapsulate the profile. This ensures the profile becomes integral to the tile assembly and creates a durable, strong installation. Step six, install your tile. Firmly press the tile to align it flush with the upper edge of the profile. Remember, a correctly installed profile will lie flush or slightly above the tile edge. Many people want to run their tile flush to the profile, but it's best practice to leave an eighth inch or larger gap for grouting. This makes sure um, that the overall tile assembly is stronger, but also ensures that water and dirt can't get between the profile and the tile and in the future undermine your installation. Step seven is our last step. This is often overlooked, but vitally important to the aesthetics of the installation. Immediately after installing the profiles and tiles, clean the visible surface with a sponge and clean water to remove any mortar or grout residue that may have gotten on the profile. Aluminum profiles especially are sensitive to alkali materials. These alkali materials can be found in cementitious products and will etch or mar the surface if not removed promptly. Once this discoloration has occurred, it's virtually impossible to remove the staining later. Congratulations, you have now successfully gone through all the steps to install a profile. As you can see, it's very simple. While we went over it uh, very quickly, if you do run into issues, another great source of information is the NTCA reference manual. In it, you can find a whole section on common profile installation issues and how to troubleshoot them. I really suggest you check this out. Once installed, profiles require very little maintenance. They simply need to, peri to be periodically cleaned to keep them looking their best. To clean profiles, we recommend a pH neutral cleaner or a solution of dish soap and water. No special cleaners or tools are required. Keep in mind that using abrasive agents or tools will scratch profiles, even stainless steel ones, so take care to avoid using them. Also, avoid alkaline cleaners such as bleach on aluminum profiles as they can damage the decorative surface. Now that we've talked about the basics of profiles, I wanted to touch on briefly on two specialty profile shapes you might encounter. We mentioned these earlier in the presentation. The first are cove profiles. These dedicated pieces have a smooth radius and when installed correctly, create an easy to clean transition between two perpendicular surfaces, such as floor or wall junctions. Most often they are used in commercial settings, such as restaurants, airports, and other similar places, where there's lots of foot traffic and cleanliness is very important. All cove profiles will have their own dedicated corner pieces and accessories, and can come in any of the three materials, PVC, aluminum, or stainless steel. The second specialty profile you may encounter is what is referred to as a movement or expansion joint profile. They are used to accommodate for expansion and contraction in a large field of tile. They can also take the place of a cock field joint, when correctly specified in space, they avoid the potential for cracking and buckling in the tiles. It's important to note though that while they can help it with in-plane movement, out-of-plane movement such as up and down movement must be handled separately and they don't take the place of anti-fracture or decoupling membranes. Just to summarize, I know we've gone over a lot already. I wanted to to leave you with a couple key takeaways. 
First, profiles and trims provide a means to professionally finish tile edges, providing both beauty, protection, and safety. Profiles and trims are available in a wide variety of shapes and finishes. Chances are, whatever you're looking for, there's a profile out there for it. The appropriate size profile should be selected to provide the maximum performance. They should always sit flush or slightly above the edge of the tile. Installing profiles is simple, but must be done correctly uh, to ensure longevity and performance. And lastly, when cutting profiles, select the correct tool for the best results. So with that, I wanna thank you for your attendance and ask if you have any questions. Ben, uh, very, uh, very informative, great presentation. Um, uh, I have one question here that's come in. We had a lot of people already comment, thank you for the great information and, and uh, really appreciated it. And uh, the question we have right now is, can we recommend fixing profiles using anchors along with the uh, tile adhesive considering more safety? Does that make sense to you? So we suggest to anchor the profiles just using tile adhesive. Um, you don't want anything that's going to cause your tile to sit higher or uh, get, in, get in the way of the um, tile being fully embedded. So we don't suggest using anchors um, in addition to adhesive. Great. All right. Is it okay to do a 90 degree bend around a corner? So you can do a 90 degree bend around a corner uh, using one of the three methods we showed. Um, corner pieces are a great way to do this as they allow um, for the shape of the profile to match exactly. It becomes trickier if you want to use one of the other methods as the cutting and the mitering becomes much more complicated. All right. What do you recommend when an undulated tile is specified with a metal or PVC profile? Good question. Right. So this goes back to what we were speaking about um, to look out for with large format tiles. So because you're gonna wanna um, protect the full edge of the tile, you're gonna have to look for where the high point of that tile is where it's sitting and select a profile that's going to cover that full, um, that full tile edge. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge um, as with an undulating tile, you're gonna have places that are gonna sit a little bit lower. Okay. Can you go back on here and go to step six? Certainly. Yep. All right, so one of our technical people here at NTCA just wanted to comment that you don't trawl then set the long way of the tile, you go the short way. So just so if anyone saw that and thought that was the right way, we wanna point out that we would want to be trawling up and down in that situation instead of left to right. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, all right. We got a few more coming in here. All right. Do you offer curved profiles? So uh, we refer to them as bendable profiles. And yes, um, Latacrete does offer a line of curved profiles. Nice. All right. Is there an integrated movement joint in standard metal profiles like another brand states? I'm not sure exactly what they're referring to, but if they want to reach out directly to me, um, we can help them select the correct profile and see if we might have something that can work for their needs. Ben, why don't you go back to your last slide, which has your email address on it, and Aaron, sure. if you wanted to reach out directly to Ben, he's going to have his uh, email address there. It's blampy at latacrete.com. Thank you. Well, any last questions coming in? You did a great job and a lot of really good information. I want to thank you. I want to thank Latacrete for these informational uh, webinars we're doing. Um, so thank you. I want to make sure all of our attendees know that uh, our next webinar is scheduled for October 3rd and you'll be getting an invite for that. And Ben, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Everybody else have a great week and weekend coming up. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.